<laughs> okay, everybody look natural. <laughs> Are we live? Now, I came up here to talk about police brutality, which is a dumb idea for me to be doing, okay? Really, really stupid idea. Because then the man was like, oh, you know, you're trying not to use profanity and stuff. I'm like, oh, man, oh. I had to swear about a thousand times just to make it here. So I was late. I was just home swearing, just getting out of my system. Because this is the subject of police brutality. It's a wonderful subject, isn't it? Wonderful, right? Welcome to the show. Keep the clo door closed. We're not trying to die, right? These are, these are strange times. These are strange times. Now, the reason why police brutality is a touchy subject for me, many reasons. One of the reasons, they shot my friend in the back of the head because they couldn't catch him, right? I guess that's what you do to black people when you can't catch them, right? Is that what it is? Because it doesn't happen to white folks, it doesn't seem so. Because when it happens to black people and they can't catch us, they pull out a gun. With white folks, they pull out a radio and they go, I can't catch him. He's on foot, headed north. Another thing they used to do, now this used to get on my damn nerves. Another thing they used to do is they used to stop by us in the hood, right? Mostly the French cops used to do this. I think it's because they were going through this learning process. <laughs> they don't know what it was, okay? But these cops used to do this. When they would come up, they would roll up on us, and they would start to use, like, English buzzwords to try to, like, gain our friendship. And they didn't even know what the words meant. They would just roll up and just be like, uh, hey, hey, uh, Wu-Tang, huh? Huh? Snoop Dogg? Yeah? Yeah, Bob Marley, Ganja, Ganja, huh? Yeah, you know, and I don't know what they were expecting. I don't know what the whole point of that was. I think they expected us to be like, oh, my man, oh, I didn't even know that was you. Giving food for love to the link, to the link, to the link, yeah. Ooh. To the link, to the link, to the link, yeah. All of that said to just share the link, y'all. Do it up! <laughs> <laughs> and coming up next, we have the one and only Pro V, who'll be sharing some beats yeah. with y'all. And DG's very own. Yeah, yeah. Peace, peace, peace. So to let everybody know what's going on here. On the left, I got the SP-1200 as my drum machine and sequencer. I got a whole bunch of samples in the S950, because this only has 10 seconds of sample time. These are machines from the late 80s. It's how a lot of classic hip-hop was made, so that's the school that I came from, and that's how I make my beats. I take the sounds from vinyls, put them in there. I couldn't bring the rest of my... Got to big them up. 
Widget, DJ Buddha Blaze, Flo, Tokyo Kid. Uh, yeah. Louise. Yeah. Make some noise for Louise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to start off with a beat that I made from, it's kind of like a, a homage to NDG, homage to Shades of Culture. I remade the Mind State beat, so I'm going to start off with that, and we'll kick it from there. Peace. Video for this one was shot down the street. Were you in that video, Blast? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, man, NDG history. What up, D Shade? City when it comes to musicians and music. This one here is from my blog. A block stand up. Every time I roll loud, I'm with my dogs in. Um, as you well, as some of you may know or not know, yesterday was the uh, the two-year anniversary of the um, the murder of Nicholas Gibbs, which happened unfortunately a couple blocks away from here, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, since, I mean, the, the particularities of, of what happened uh, are very tragic, but like many instances where people die at the hand of the police, it was totally uh, avoidable. Um, in this case, uh, Nicholas Gibbs had, um, was going through a mental crisis. Um, the police came, it escalated, um, and then he, he was gunned down. So, um, so for me, I've, I've been a filmmaker for many years. I've dealt with many, many subjects. And this one, when I heard about it, it, uh, it immediately, being a filmmaker is, is a fairly um, solitary process. Mm -hmm. 
you're writing grants, you're editing your demo, you're trying to set up um, filming days, all that kind of stuff. And um, but then when you actually you you, you make those those people to people encounter yes. it just everything disappears the work that you did before mm -hmm. you realize how it was important to really mm -hmm. create that space so so for me it's been like every moment that I meet the people that are the stakes the stakeholders uh, the people that have been affected the the directly and indirectly by this it is kind of what it gives me it it, it, it I don't know it's like it, it settles settles the, the film becomes like a, a deeper like it becomes part of my own uh, yes. fabric and then it gives me a, a, an energy to sort yes. of uh, to keep going. Thank you so much. I, I, we're looking forward to, to the movie, and I think it's a story that must be told, and that has to be At told. Core, and if awful. you can share some of your experiences as community workers in terms of how can we make these neighborhoods more accountable to each other and to the, and to the police force and to authorities so our youth can walk down these streets peacefully mm -hmm. without scared of having too much melanin, for instance. That's big. It's yeah. a deep question. Yeah. <laughs> can we dissect that? Can we, how, about we, how about we try and, and dissect that yeah. at first? So mm -hmm. like, what are some of the major issues like, you know, just working at our community centers, what are some of the, you know, top five pro problematic issues that the youth are coming with mm -hmm. uh, things that youth are having issues with I mean um, you have everything from and it could be violence in the streets amongst youth you could be having les finances c'est c'est un point majeur et en même temps ce que je vois moi de mon côté ce qui ce qui ce qui me préoccupe beaucoup c'est pour que ce soit plus safe pour pour la communauté c'est aussi justement mais ça je pense que ça vient des finances que les familles sont un peu désunies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. et que et que par exemple euh, la violence policière se, se se fait pas dans certains quartiers parce qu'ils savent que s'ils touchent à un enfant de telle communauté oui. la communauté va réagir parce ah. que les familles sont solides mm -hmm. puis après les familles connaissent d'autres familles mm -hmm. et donc ça, ils ont un poids politique mm -hmm. je okay. trouve qu'on n'a pas de poids politique d'abord on doit avoir un poids financier c'est sûr mm -hmm. parce que s'il y a s'il y a un manque d'unité, c'est parce que souvent les parents sont comme « j'ai pas le temps de parler avec toi, comme fais ce que je te dis, va à l'école, yeah, tu yeah. vois, je dois faire mon argent, je, dois, je travaillais deux, trois jobs en même temps, tu yeah. vois, et donc ça c'est clair que les finances ça joue. Mm » -hmm. So Mais just a second, today, before yeah. you make your next point, can we translate yeah. that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said that we don't have a sense of accountability in terms of the communities because most families are completely fractured. Whereas other neighborhoods, if you hit a child or if something happens to a child, you have families and units mm -hmm. that will come together yeah. as a community who know other families and other families and have a political weight. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's what happened with the Filipino kid uh, who were uh, like... Euh, qui a été pris à, à partie par, euh, par un policier, la communauté des Filipino. Philippines, uh -huh. Filipino, ils ont directement réagi. Ouais. Ça a mis de la pression sur la police. Ouais. Tu vois mm -hmm. yes. Mais nous, on n'a pas ça. Yeah. Chaque, okay. chaque so, frère, yeah. et on cherche nos, nos petits frères et nos petites sœurs, mm -hmm. mais surtout nos petits frères, ils cherchent le soutien dans la rue avec les, avec les, autres, right. avec les autres frères. Mm -hmm. et, et, mais ça, ça n'a pas de poids politique. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So we look for other ways of having a sense of mm -hmm. unity and cohesion mm -hmm. through the other youth that you find in the street. Um, YNDG, it's like such a tight-knit community and there really is an energy that's specific to here. Um, when I think about how time is going by, um, I think about housing and how it's like tricky to afford rent here. So. <laughs> Even people who can't afford to live in NDG anymore, they still gravitate to this neighborhood. So that's the pull that this neighborhood has on people. Um, but uh, NDG, I, it's just dominated by trees and like just everyone, you can say hi to everyone. It's just everyone kind of knows you and it's very tight knit. It's nice. For me, from my side, it's really. Comme je disais, c'est entre Côte des Neiges et NDG, et j'aime bien l'esprit de, de communauté. C'est comme un village un peu. Mm -hmm. Et j'aime ce, ce vibe de village. Mm -hmm.